Hello everybody. Okay, welcome back. Tonight is part three of the three-day uh, prophecy for 2024. If you've been with me for the first two parts, welcome back. If you haven't seen part one and part two, I urge you to go and see it. I'll put the link below in the description box if you would like to go and have a look at it. It is a beautiful prophecy that flows from one end to the other. If you have not yet jo joined my Telegram channel, I urge you to do so. I'm going to write down the whole prophetic word. Okay, I'm going to type it up in a PDF form. I'm going to add all the scriptures and, and everything I need to add to it. And I'll attach it to my Telegram channel where you will be able to download it, print it, study through it yourself, pray through it yourself. This is so important, people. I cannot stress it enough. This prophecy is vital for you to understand, to grasp, to really treasure in your heart because there's so much that the, the Lord has revealed through this prophetic word. All right, so please look at the link below to my ch Telegram channel. It's right there. Click on the link if you, don't, if you do not have Telegram, then please download it. Okay, there's lots happening on Telegram. It's a really nice platform, so get it. A lot of people have it already. Um, and then join our Telegram channel. All right, let's begin. For thus says the Father of all nations, O my children, how I have loved thee. My love overflows like a river into your hearts. It is a river that never ends. It is a river that never runs dry. It is a river that is never contaminated. It is the pure, unfiltered love that flows from my heart to you. In every day of your lives, in each moment, from the moment you take your first breath to the moment you breathe your last, I am there, says the Lord. Loving you through each moment of your life, never letting go, never walking away, always there, ready to love. Always eager to extend my arms to whomever desires to come to me. This coming year will surely be a year of encounter. You will encounter many things, but the most important of all will be the encounter with my love. For my love will overflow. This river will burst its, its banks, says the Spirit of God. Yes, a flood of the love of God is about to pour out upon the earth. Yes, even in the midst of trouble and darkness. As I have spoken to you and I have told you that the love of many will grow cold. And you will be shocked, my children, at what your eyes see and your ears hear because of the hatred that burns in man. So, at the same time, my love will overflow in my children because my love is about to flood your hearts as never before. You will encounter the love of God as never before. For I am about to reveal my love to many as I have already done to you, my daughter. I'll share my testimony about this at the end of the video. Many more shall encounter my love, for revival is at your doorstep. Is it not love that sets them free? As the world is war-torn and divided, so the Spirit will flow anyway, and entire towns and even some cities and nations will be bowled over by the Spirit of God and the love that flows from my heart. Love will grow more than ever before. Therefore, there will be a great divide, a great chasm between darkness and light, for darkness will increase. It will show its vilest form. It will reveal its darkest secrets, enough to make the world sick at its evil. Yet at the same time, light will increase as the world explodes with my love. And many shall be astonished at what I'm about to do, for it has never been done before. Entire towns will bow their knees to me, the King of kings and Lord of lords, as the Holy Spirit pours out the love of God within the hearts of men, women and children. Many shall weep and rejoice as millions enter into my kingdom through the power of the Holy Spirit, not through the power of man. For no man 
shall take my glory. For as I told you, my children, your greatest days are before you, and on my heart, because of my love, is the salvation of men. For I desire to bring many more into my kingdom. At the same time, Satan will war and fight with his demon armies against the new believers. For the shepherds and leaders who are faithful to me are few that will protect them. And because of the evil that increases upon this earth, many of them will lose their lives. But oh, how precious their lives are in my sight, says the Spirit of God. For their souls shall be saved and they shall inherit eternal life and reign with me. As I have spoken, so shall it be. For the greatest persecution on the believers is before you, my children. But take heart, for I have overcome the world, and so will each soul that believes in the name of my Son. Eternity lies before you where there is no more pain, there is no more weeping, and there is no more suffering. For I shall wipe away every tear and comfort every heart for the trials that you will face, O my children, upon this earth. For yes, great persecution will arise unlike the church has ever seen before. For the sleeping giant has awoken and is now roaming about on the earth, seeking whom he may devour. And that giant is hatred, and in his nostrils is the blood of the saints. He thinks he has the victory for all the blood that he will spill. Does he not know, does he not understand that death has no hold on my children? For I have overcome death, and so shall my children have the victory in me. Do not fear death, for death cannot hold you, says the Spirit of God. Death has no power over you, for I have given you eternal life. In me, you have freedom. In me, you have the victory over death. Death is but a stepping stone. It has no power to hold you. Therefore, my children, do not fear, for great things are ahead of you. You shall see wonders and you shall experience the first resurrection where the dead will arise and meet with me in victory, for death cannot hold them. And wherever I am, there is life. Therefore, my first act upon my return is resurrecting my beloved children. For wherever I am, there is life. Death cannot hold them. Do not fear death. For you are of much more value to me than anything on this earth. Every hair on your head is numbered. I have watched over you through every moment of your life. I shall never let you go, for your keeper neither slumbers nor sleeps. I have declared, you are mine. You are my bride, and oh, how I have loved you. Nothing can separate you from my love. No power, no principality, nor even death. Nothing will be able to separate you from the love that flows from my heart toward you. Know this, find your peace and your comfort in my love, for it is constant, it is deep, it is wide, it is more than what you ever realized. For every fiber of your being was created in love. Love is in your DNA. Love is in every heartbeat. Love is in every smile. Love is all around you, yet you do not yet see it. But you will. You will see. For I shall open your eyes to see love as I am. Because I am love. Tell them, my daughter, says the Spirit of God, what you encountered when you encountered my love. This is what I saw. This is this happened to me. That's what the Lord is talking about. He opened my eyes to see love. I'll tell you about it. No, no. He says, do not hold back. Shout it from the rooftops because this is what is coming. This is what many will experience. And as it transformed you, it will transform many. Millions of people will be bowled over by my love, willing to then lay down their lives for me, simply because they encountered my love. 
That is the effect of my love. It holds nothing back. It gives over completely and selflessly because there's nothing on this earth that can compare with it. Not even life itself. My love shall win the hearts of many, says the Spirit of God. Oh, I have waited for this day to flood this earth with my love. And so the earth will be comforted and the earth will be soothed from all its troubles. Because my love will win the hearts of man. In the natural, you will see the great divide between those that walk in hatred and those that walk in love. Those that walk in hatred will have nothing but destruction around them. And those who walk in love will walk in paradise with me. Yes, even upon this earth. Even everything they touch will burst forth with life, for my creative power is ignited by my love. My love creates. My love brings life, and life in abundance. There is nothing like it, O oh mankind. You have not yet understood or seen, but you will in the time to come, and this is my promise to you. For thus says the Spirit of God, I promised Noah that I would never again flood the earth as I did back then. But now I shall flood the earth, not with water to purify the earth, but rather with my love to purify the hearts of men. Because outside of me there is no goodness. Those who do not walk with me, those who do not know me, do not know love. Their heart burns with hatred alone. Murder and death goes before them and destruction follows soon after. Therefore, do not run with them, do not fall for their wicked schemes, for in just a short while, mankind will experience something that can barely be explained. You shall taste, and you shall see, and you shall experience it for yourself. So take heart, my beloved children, for I have overcome this world, and so shall you. You shall overcome in my love. My love shall be the strength in your heart. My love shall equip you to endure great sufferings with joy. With joy. You shall rejoice when you experience persecutions because you are filled with my love. Nothing can stand against my love. Nothing can destroy it. Listen, we've read about this in the Bible. The Lord says, as Stephen stood with joy while he was being stoned. You can read that in the book of Acts. Stephen stood with joy while they were stoning him. He, they, were, they were killing him. <laughs> they were throwing huge rocks at him to kill him. And while this was busy happening, he watched the heavens open and he saw the Son of God standing at my right hand. And so you shall experience it as well. As Stephen stood with joy while he was being stoned, so many will experience it as well. The Spirit of God says he could rejoice in that moment of his death because he was filled with my love. You see? Not even death has a hold on me. Not even death can stand against my love. This is hard for you to understand, I know. But for those who have encountered my love, you know. You understand well. Death has no hold on my love. It never can and it never will. My love is the key to victory. And those who overcome shall be empowered by it. Therefore take heart my children, for love has overcome this world. Love shall give you the victory, my love, and no other. That's the end of the word. All right. So the Lord told me to tell you again. It's amazing. The last video I did before these prophecies was my testimony. So I'm going to put the link below in the description box below. Please go and watch the whole video. I'm not going to go through my whole testimony now. But the Lord put it on my heart strategically just before he was about to reveal this prophetic word. I think that's just so amazing. What I had prayed for, for so many years, God answered today. This was my prayer. 
you will not believe how many times I was on my knees, weeping, begging God just to touch other people as he did me in the garden that day. I couldn't understand why others couldn't have it too. So I prayed and I sought the Lord that um, the love of Jesus would be revealed to people as, he, as it was revealed to me because that was the day my life changed. And this, what the Lord is speaking, is not something I am just speaking out of thin air. This is exactly what I have experienced. I stood in a garden and God opened my physical eyesight. My eyesight changed. Everything around me became so bright. And suddenly I could see the love of God woven into every single thing around me. In the plants, in the ground, in the grass, in the trees, in the sky, in the birds. Everything around me I could see. The Creator's love in it. It is very difficult to explain. But it totally changed my life. That's the day love entered my heart. And from that day on, for the last 11 years of my life, I have lived for Jesus and I have forsaken everything to do that. I would even die for Him, willingly. And it's because of love. What He tells you here is the truth. I have lived it. I have given up everything. Possessions pff, means nothing. Friends, family, money, all of it, nothing. I have given it up to know the love of God or because I knew the love of God rather. Love took over my life and I would have lost everything, even husband and children. Uh, yeah, that's how much it, it took over. It it consumed every part of my being. Thank God I didn't have to lose my husband and children. But um, I would have. And I don't say that lightly. I mean every word. Because the love of God is enough. It is all you desire. It is all you will ever need. It is more than what you can imagine. It takes away all pain. It destroys every wicked thing within you. It transforms. It changes. The love of God as we read about in 1 John. I urge you tonight, go and read the book of 1 John. <clears throat> 1 John is incredible in explaining exactly what the Lord was saying to us tonight. It is the love of God that we all need. And I'm also led to just pray a prayer over you out of the Bible. This is a prayer I have prayed so many times over people. And um, it's an amazing prayer you should all pray so that you may also encounter this love. All right, let me pray over you. So, Father... <clears throat> I pray that the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, O God, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened, <clears throat> that they would know what is the hope of your calling, what are the riches of of the glory of your inheritance in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe, according to the working of your mighty power, which you worked in Jesus when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And you put all things under his feet, and you gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For this reason, Father, I bow my knees to you, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that you would grant them according to the riches of your glory 
to be strengthened with might through your spirit in the inner man and inner woman, that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith, that they would be rooted and grounded in love, and that they would be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Jesus Christ which passes all knowledge, that they may be filled with all of your fullness, O God. Now to you, O Father, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to your power that works in us, to you be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. If you would like to go pray that prayer, it's out of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15 to 23 and again from chapter 3 from verse 14 to 21. Shalom, everyone.